does not allow the venom to bind to whatever cell it's intended to destroy. So for all intents and purposes, shackles is immune to the snake venoms of the snakes in his area. But only the snakes in his area. So if a cobra were to meet to bite shackles, he would get just a second The snake in my right hand is a 12-year-old ball python. Ball pythons are native to West Africa. They don't get very big, about four and a half to five feet is a full grown adult. Consequently, these guys are very popular now in the pet trade and are produced in literally thousands of different colors and patterns due to what we call selective genetics. Come on, you guys, pull down the chair, sit wherever you like. Albina is an example of that. She is what's called an albino or a melanistic ball python. That just means that the gene is melanin that codes for the colors green, brown, and black is missing in her, so we are left with yellow and white looking guys. Snakes smell and taste with their tongue, guys, so if that tongue touches you, it won't hurt. It simply tickles. And snake skin is keratin-based. I can turn that off if it's too cold. It can't spend the uh, It's too cold? Okay, I'll turn it off. Okay. Oh! Oh, it's a, it's a button. I can do it. Okay. I can do it with the remote. But thank you. So just like your fingernails or your hair, so not at all slimy, very smooth, clean, and pleasant to the touch, these two are two of the world's friendliest, so it's an excellent opportunity to hold their children who've never done so before. Does anybody want to give it a shot? Oh, great! You want to hold it? Yeah, that's a good shot. Check it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull it down to where you like. Come on in, guys. Come on back. I'll take the ball. Droopy eyelids, called ptosis, 
and eventually respiratory failure are sometimes delayed, not setting in for hours after a bite. When they do set in, they can be rapid and dramatic. Antivenom is extremely important in treating coral snake bites. The Pfizer Corporation is once again producing a coral snake antivenom. In addition, a Mexican antivenom, as well as several other foreign serums, do seem to be effective in treating bites by the North American coral snakes. Coral snakes feed almost exclusively on other snakes and small ground dwelling lizards. Because it is difficult to obtain a steady food supply in captivity, the coral snakes at Medtoxin are tube-fed a pre-measured high-protein diet. Watch as the tube is gently inserted and the diet moved into the snake's stomach. This will hold the coral until his next venom extraction and feeding 14 days from now.
is only used sometimes in copperhead envenomations. The southern copperhead produces a venom long sought after by researchers. This venom contains an important protein called contortrostatin. Contortrostatin inhibits platelet aggregation and cellular adhesion. These properties have taken this protein into a variety of cancer research. Watch as the snake is gently captured and induced to bite. You will see a small amount of venom fall along the interior of the glass. It takes literally thousands of venom extractions to produce appreciable amounts of venom. After the snake is bitten, he will be returned to his clean enclosure, fed, and left alone for 14 days until his next venom extraction cycle. Accuracy 
and a thorough understanding of the last name. His teeth were vibrating. There is no way I knew it. The Western Diamond Mag is a very important part of the Venom program at Metoxin and the Reptile Discovery Center. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine that door was open. Well, they're like a bee. They can keep stabbing you and venomizing you. Or if a bee gets you once. Oh, he's wrong. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Like that, you know, that'd be to be in the oven. Yeah. 450. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The best way is just get rid of the mop on him. That's a lot of rhythm. Yeah, that makes sense. I think they're way Organ transplant work, 
neuromuscular chemistry, and the list goes on. I don't think she likes it. Hey, you know, I don't like that. I think she... Yeah, she, she's gone. She Most cobras <laughs> make long-lived and hearty captives. Many of the cobras you see here were born and raised at the Reptile Discovery Center and at Tossin Meadow Laboratories. It is not uncommon for our cobras to live 20 years or more, and they are one of the most important members of our dental line. snake bites. I, I haven't had one in 11 years, so we've been safe for a long time. That's we've nice. had 11 in the first 15 years. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Were those all venomous? Yeah. Those were all venomous. That's what we're after, that venom. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was that water you were like, putting on your hand? Was it water or alcohol? What was the solution you were putting on your hands in between the animals? I don't hear well, Mars, my ear. Sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's a dilute bleach solution, so it's just a disinfectant. Yeah. It gives me a quick, it also gives me a little tack on my hands so that when I grab the snake, I stick to him a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? I didn't, oh, yes, sir, yes. Do you have, do you have venomous bites? Do you have any venomous bites? Eleven venomous bites, yeah. And they were no fun. Don't ever do that. <laughs> That's for sure. Yes, sir. Do you have any wombats here? You, we sure do. Yeah, we have uh, three of the so, four subspecies of mambas, yep. And we collect their venom. You know, um, the Africans do the mamba venom for the antivenom over there. Uh, two labs in Africa. And so we get a little bit of call for research on it. And I did so much of it in the late 90s and early 2000s that I have lots of it in the freezer. So we don't do them regularly. Um, now and again, we do them. I think we have six blacks right now, ten greens, something like that. Okay. Yeah. What's the hardest snake to handle? Yeah. Um, you know, you can generalize a little bit by species. So you can say um, uh, West African green mob is terribly difficult. Cantiles, which is a Mexican snake, really difficult. Um, partially because not only is it your safety, but it's his safety. They tend to twist and they can break their neck. But more often, what we've come to realize is it's individuals in the mix. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a group of snakes. We even have a couple back there. You'll walk through the lab and you'll see a sign that'll just say, do not handle. And, you know, years and years ago, I was sitting in, in, in intensive care one year with a cottonmouth bite. 
and my colleague called me and said, hey, how you doing, you know? And the cottonmouth that bit me was a terrible snake. He was, a, he, he was always mad, and he was big, and he was fast, and he was alert. And it, so sure enough, he bit me one night in August, years ago. And I was laying there, and I thought, you know, I said, I knew that snake was going to bite me. I knew it. And he said, yeah, you know, those bad guys, the really bad ones, I just take them off the venom line. And I remember thinking, of course, you know, I have a hundred cottonmouths. Why do I need to work that one? Most of them are reasonable. So anyway, in every group of snakes, it's kind of a long-winded answer. Just like dogs or people, you wind up with a few. I have one big albino monocle cobra back there right now. He doesn't know he's a cobra. He thinks he's a taipan. And he's lightning fast, and he's so alert. And so, so I handled him for a while, about a year, and I thought, the snake is going to get me. No, I just took him off the line. So it's that kind of thing. You'll have the Michael Jordans of the snake world sometimes, that are, and you just think, ah, I don't need to do him, unless you desperately need that minnow. So I hope that makes sense. Thank you. You bet, you bet. Yeah? What's the most muscular one you deal with? It looks like a rattlesnake, kind of. Maybe yeah, who's different. the most powerful? As you might imagine, size plays a part of that. Yesterday we did a yeah, big new 11-foot Malaysian King Cobra. Um, he's new to the Venom line. He's, he's pretty powerful. He's pretty in some of those big rattlesnakes. Although, it, it is, thankfully, it's never a strength equation. It is a technique equation. Gotcha. So most people with any nominal degree of strength, I'm not strong. Um, would be fine, but you're making sure that that snake can't twist in your hand and then get a fang in you. Yeah. Anybody else, guys? Yeah. Yes, what sir. do you do for prevention if you're out walking and your snake is in your path? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we always really feel like your eyes are your best defense against snakes. Um, so if you're hiking in areas where you can't see well, high grass and that kind of thing, a good pair of boots or shoes or heavy pants. But the reality of it is most snakes, man, they don't want anything to do with you. So unless you step on them, most of the time they'll sit tight and hope maybe you don't see me. There's a rattlesnake study going on right now where rattlesnakes are rattling less. I thought it was a joke when somebody first told me it's not because over the last whatever it's been, a couple of million years that rattlesnakes rattle, they get killed, they get seen, and they get killed. So they're starting to rely more on coloration and that kind of thing. So we always think when I hunt snakes, I hunt in sneakers, and it's always about where are you looking. You don't put your hands and feet where you can't see them. And most of the time that works out pretty good. Yep. Yes, ma'am. My, my understanding of this is that the garden black snake is, is harmless and you leave them alone yeah. and, and do their thing. However, how do you know it's a garden black snake and not something else that might look yeah. like it? Like, yeah. is there anything that looks like it that you need to In, in Florida, about? not so much. Okay. So if you're sure you're looking at a black snake. So cottonmouths are black as adults, but they're built yeah. very differently. Yes. And their habitats tend yeah, to be a little different, right? And they, So there's nothing dangerous here that's all black that's long and thin. Although we always laugh, if you get a chance, look at the boom slang that's out on exhibit. Um, she's built just like a black snake. Her head looks just like she's African. You're not going to find one of those here, at least not with any luck. So, um, so but, but the old question is, if there's ever a question, particularly in an area where we have some very dangerous snakes, then clearly you wouldn't go near that snake. I mean, that's always kind of... in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing is... Um, Coral snakes are kind of an exception to this, and maybe even pygmy rattlesnakes, but cottonmouths and eastern diamondbacks really do not like people or development. So as those things tend to move in, those big venomous snakes tend to move out. And oftentimes, if we find one or get a call from one in what's truly a residential or a suburban setting, often that snake is lost. He kind of wandered in and got confused. And because he's well aware that there are all kinds of problems around him that are not suitable to him. So black snakes are, are very comfortable in suburban settings. They eat tree frogs and anoles and these kind of things. They find shelter in your gutters, in your soffits, in your... So they're very common and they're comfortable around people. And so, the, and you know, we often... not problematic. Yeah, right. No, I mean, I, you know, certainly they're nippy little things. If you grab one, they'll bite you, but they yeah. can't hurt you. Yeah, they can't. Mm -hmm. Right. Most people feel like you do. I'll leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I noticed that uh, 
for most of the snakes, it was a kind of a team effort. On yeah. the cobras, maybe even another one, it was a one person effort. Is yeah. that a technique? It, it is. So with pit vipers, or large vipers, when Mara uses that body press, uh, it, the snake safety is of enormous concern to us. And when you pin a snake's head, their tendency is often to thrash, to try and get out of that pin. So by immobilizing his body, he can't really do that. And it also limits his strike a little bit. So it's much safer. And pit vipers and vipers tend to kind of tuck in under that press. She's not pushing hard. Cobras, if you put a press on their back like that, they get very flaily, kind of. Mambas are the same way. So with the cobras, I have them by the tail. And when I pin them, it's a momentary switch, but I'm doing the exact same thing by not letting him thrash about too much. So always, our records are actually very good, but, but you're always after the snake's safety once your own is set up. You want to make sure you're not hurting him, letting him break his neck or a rib or a... And so those kind of, that's what those yeah. are catches so are all just about. Don't leave me. Yeah. Some people go, oh, the cover's coming out, and she left. It's getting really dangerous. Now. <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, it's just, a, it's very common. People think that, yeah, it's just a different technique. Yeah, we were talking about you. We thought yeah. you were running through the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to get out of the picture, and we try to get out of your, so you can see the cobra and not us. Yeah, yeah. Do they stay on the venom line forever? Do you like rotate them out every few months? Or? They do. No, you know, once somebody comes of age, so a lot of stuff will hit the venom line at 18 months. Sometimes there's a little ontogenic change in snake venom. The venom changes as the snake moves from baby to adulthood. Sometimes we want that change. So in the antivenom project, for instance, when they're trying to make a very broad antibody so that if you get bitten by a baby or an old snake or a snake from southern Florida or a snake from Georgia, you're going to get good coverage. So we want all of it. Other times we want a fairly stable or pr product from one area and then we'll move out. And then sometimes when guys get real old, we'll retire them. Um, yeah. Snakes shed their fangs, uh, like sharks shed their teeth. And years ago, I had an old geriatric rattlesnake, and she finally stopped growing fang. She would get up on the glass, Aah! and the venom would flow, but she had no teeth. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it was just kind of interesting. But now when I start to see them moving into real, we'll, we'll move them off. But they'll last. Some of these guys have been on the venom line 20 years. No. Yep. Yeah. 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 Say that again. What do you do with them after you take them off the line? Do you, like, they just stay here. Just yeah. Yeah, no, they just stay here after they're so used.